today on how it shouldn't be made. Not a stepper motor, coils. So I should probably explain what I'm actually doing. On my last video, there's a lot of really good discussion on how to control a rotating object going very, very fast. And servos were by and large a huge recommendation, so I ordered a few of those in, and actually some brushless motor controls that I haven't seen laying around, and I figured I'd ordered one in because it would be good to have one on hand anyways. But this is a fun little science experiment that I kind of have been mulling around in my head and wanted to put it on paper. Once I get a few of my mainstream options in, I'll absolutely do a video on that, but uh, I want to see where this leads me for the moment. So obviously one of the most important parts of this is the arm. It needs to be well balanced, but it also needs to be fairly strong. So something I've introduced into my workflow a little bit is called topology optimization. Essentially it tells the computer what pieces parts need to be the strongest. Uh, you could, especially with a 3D printer, just print it as is in the mesh. But I like to go through and actually make a manufacturable part uh, like you would need to on a CNC machine. Now, unfortunately, this part uh, wasn't the right one, so I had to remake it. But it ended up looking about like this uh, for the final design, and I'm actually really, really happy with it. So. so let's talk a little bit about how a stepper motor actually functions. Usually, in most stepper motors, we have two fields. We have an A field and a B field. These fields, when energized, form a polarized magnet just the same as a regular magnet works, and the center rotor also has a polarity. So when you energize the field, it creates a magnetic force that pulls the rotor to a set position. When you set up a few of these fields and create them about 15 degrees apart, then you can energize two at once and create a half step. You can set them up in such a way that the standard stepper motor has a precision of about 1.5 degrees per step, sometimes less. Focusing in on what is essentially a small electromagnet, we have two things to consider. First of all is that those coils carry energy as they are charged up and as they are discharged. And you can actually see a very large voltage spike if you're not careful and you don't put a diode across the leads. Another thing to keep in mind is the inductance, because any current changes that the coils go through will take a set amount of time, as shown in this equation right here. That's the biggest factor, and I saw a lot of comments saying that why don't I just use a solenoid to actuate this or something along those lines. And the fact of the matter is, is that the time it takes to charge up that big of a coil to move that amount of force, the coil's field can't collapse and then recharge in the amount of time that we need it to. For example, this solenoid that I bought for an earlier project last year takes almost a second to reset it's very, very strong, but it takes a while for that to build up and change. See, the biggest problem facing me in a current stepper motor is I have two sets of coils. I have two fields that are fighting each other. And I have to charge and discharge those coils fast enough in order to step around. It's better than a big electromagnet, but it's still not perfect. So let's create more fields and let's put them on a linear plane. So if we create A, B, C, D, and E fields across, A has a significant more amount of time to recharge and go to a negative state than it did when it was just, it had to be on on the next step. This runs into a little bit of a problem on the other side because when it hits field E, it now has to turn around and field D just was energized so it has to turn back on and it doesn't solve our problems unless we extend what is essentially forming our rotor out to where we have one set of coils handling the opening and one set of coils handling the closing. What that means is that over the entire course of one out valve opening and closing each individual coil only has to act once, which gives it a lot of time. Yes, it's harder to control, but control isn't really our hangup right now. It's moving an object. That's the theory. And at this point, it is still a theory. I don't completely know if this is all actually going to work. 
I'm still keeping my other options open for a reason because this is an experiment at this point. So, so I got everything hooked up to a breadboard here. Uh, luckily, breadboards are not rated to three amps, but they are handling three amps quite well. Uh, but let's get it plugged in, and there we go. Right like that, it works quite well. So at this point, I'm pretty happy with my Nata stepper motor. This is this is working pretty well. Uh, I think from here, I'm going to switch over to the the long coils, and that'll give me a lot more precision instead of using nails because that. Uh, it was what I had laying around. Um, now that I know that it works, which I was fairly confident that it was going to, um, now I can switch over to actually designing it right and well. But even in this state, it works uh, pretty well. Obviously, the, the strength isn't there, but uh, uh, I think with the smaller coils, I'll be able to charge and discharge them quick enough. I think I can make this work. If nothing else, it's a fun rabbit hole for an afternoon. So. So I think that'll probably do it for right now. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Uh, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, comment below, and thank you very much for watching.